Second Chronicles chapter 33. We begin our study in verse 1, and this is our 26th study in Second Chronicles. <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter 33, beginning in verse 1. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. Manasseh was the very evil son of a very godly father named Hezekiah, who we saw last time was a great king in Israel. And it says in verse 2, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. So he rejected God, and he lived, he lived like the devil. And according to historical records, one of the things that he did, he actually had the prophet Isaiah sawn in two. Verse 3, he rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had demolished. He also erected altars to the Baals and made Asherah poles. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. And so Manasseh undid all the good his father did. He worshipped false gods. He worshipped false things instead of the God who made all things. Verse 4. He built, he built altars in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever. In both courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to the starry host. And so the holy temple, which had been built and consecrated to the service and worship of God, was now being used for false gods, including the false religion of astrology. And he was into it all. Verse 6, this, this is unthinkable to me, but it says, He sacrificed his sons in the fire in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, practiced sorcery, divination, and witchcraft, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, provoking him to anger. So he sacrificed his own sons to the god Molech. The heirs of his throne were murdered. And so he was involved in all sorts of horrible things, all sorts of the occult. 7. He took the carved image he made and put it in God's temple. Putting a statue of a false god in God's temple was an, an ultimate insult to the Lord. Manasseh was as bad as anyone could possibly be up until this point. There was never, I don't think, anybody as bad as him, at least up until this point. He took the carved image he had made and put it in God's temple, of which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites leave the land I assign to your forefathers, if only they will be careful to do everything I commanded them concerning all the laws, decrees, and ordinances given through Moses. God's promises to his people, Israel, were conditional. If they obeyed and served him, then he would bless. And he proved several times that he could be trusted to do that. Verse 9, But Manasseh led Judah and the people of Jerusalem away, so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. That's, a, that's an unbelievable statement right there. They had done horrible things, led by Manasseh, and God graciously warned them that he had destroyed the heathen who occupied the Holy Land before he gave it to Israel because they had been so bad. He destroyed them he destroyed them actually for less evil than Manasseh did. And so Manasseh is pushing God over the edge here. It's, it's almost as if he's daring God to punish him. And verse 10 says, The Lord spoke to Manasseh 
and his people, but they paid no attention. So, you know, they were terrible sinners, but God graciously warned them to stop. Thing is, they didn't stop. Verse 11. So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. And so for his sin and for his refusal to repent, Manasseh is taken away to Babylon. Verse 12. In his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem, to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. And so you think about this. Do you ever, do you ever feel at times that you know, God won't forgive you anymore because you've committed sins too many times? Well, think of Manasseh when you start to think in those terms because Manasseh murdered innocent children, including his own, and not just murdering them in cold blood, murdering them as a sacrifice to false gods, adding evil upon evil. Not only that, he murdered God's prophets. But when he repented, God forgave him and restored him as king of Judah. Just look at how quick God is to forgive. Verse 14, Afterward, he rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David, west of the Gihon Spring in the valley, as far as the entrance of the fish gate and encircling the hill of Ophel. He also made it much higher. He stationed military commanders in all the fortified cities in Judah, and so he stopped doing foolish, ungodly things and started doing productive things after he repented. 15. He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord as well as all the altars he had built on the temple hill and in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. And so he did a 180-degree turnaround and tried to get the rest of the country to do the same thing. I mean, he... He undid the idolatry stuff that, his, that he had done earlier, trying to reverse things. So this is true repentance, what you see right here, trying to undo you know, the damage done by your sin, uh, what you committed earlier. That's repentance. And a turning away from it, of course, turning away from that sin. He restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship and thank offerings on it and told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. So he tried to be a good influence. The people, however, verse 17, continued to sacrifice at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. So the people worshipped God. They followed the lead of Manasseh, but it was sort of a mixed bag. It was sort of mixed with the worship of false gods because it was done on high places rather than in the temple of Lo alone, which is where God said, that all true worship was to take place. 18. The other events of Manasseh's reign, including his prayer to his God and the words the seers spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, are written in the annals of the kings of Israel, 2 Kings chapter 1, to be exact. 19. His prayer and how God was moved by his entreaty as well as all his sins and unfaithfulness and the sins where he built high places and set up Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself, all are written in the records of the seers. Manasseh rested with his fathers and was buried in his palace, and Ammon his son succeeded him as king. And unfortunately, Ammon learned some bad things from his father. Manasseh repented during his life, but he had been an evil influence on his son, Ammon, and the damage was done, as we will see. 21. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. And so Manasseh was 45 years old when Ammon was born. Normally, the oldest son would replace the father as king, but it didn't happen in this case because Manasseh had sacrificed his oldest sons to Moloch. 
verse 22, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. Ammon worshipped and offered sacrifices to all the idols Manasseh had made. And so Manasseh repented, but Ammon continued to worship false gods. And it says in verse 23, but unlike his father Manasseh, he did not humble himself before the Lord. Ammon increased his guilt. Manasseh's sins actually decreased because he repented, but Ammon's sins increased because he never did turn away from his wickedness. He went to his grave just as evil as he had always been. 24, Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated him in his palace. Actually, they murdered him while he was in his bed. 23, I'm sorry, verse 25. Then the people of the land killed all who plotted against King Ammon, and they made Josiah his son king in his place. Josiah was a good king, as we will see. And one of the first things he did was have his father's murderers executed. And so, here we go again. Another bad king who didn't learn his lesson from uh, past bad kings and how God dealt with them. Manasseh learned the hard way. His son didn't learn at all. Now, though, Josiah, he'll be a good king, and I look forward to chapter 34 next time. Until then, so long, everyone.